Good morning. Uh, good news, the Easter Bunny does not have prostate cancer. And, uh, I'm George Johnson. I'm your host today. We have a very interesting, uh, somewhat unusual for prostate cancer groups to really talk about things like this, like ED and so forth. So uh, we're looking for some new advances from uh, a team of gentlemen who will be speaking uh, in a few moments. And they'll be available for questions. If you're hesitant to ask something t terribly personal, they'll be happy to talk to you down here after the meeting. And I'll stay here for a while in case you any, got, have any general questions about uh, uh, our program. And uh, here we go. And we're very thankful for the uh, SBP. That's what they're using now for this wonderful facility. We have uh, Ben's room and ladies' room out the back door, down the, down the hall, quite a ways, and, uh, and uh, another facility aspect. Please shut off your cell phones. And uh, okay, let's start by showing you what makes this thing work. We need volunteers. I think the average age here for the members uh, that do the volunteer work is uh, approaching 80. See, so uh, we need some young blood in here to join us and, and give us an a, a, a uplift and so forth. We'd be happy to train you how to do some of these functions. But uh, uh, Gene is our, our, he's my boss. He's the guy that uh, uh, makes sure things run well. Raise your hand, Gene. So he's a great guy. He's had, he's had all kinds of treatment uh, and uh, very knowledgeable about it. And feel free to ask him questions. And if you fill out the front page of, for your newcomers, he'll give you a call and, and help you uh, with any questions you may have. And then uh, uh, I'm the next guy, uh, uh, programs. If you got any suggestions for speakers, or topics or things like that, let me know. Uh, we want to be responsive to your needs. Bill Manning, Bill Manning is up there. There's a little black box with a red light on that. And uh, he keeps that in focus. And is John here? John's back there. Yes, John, he's wide awake. And he, uh, he's a key guy in our website. And uh, you ought to be referring to that frequently. And uh, where's Steve? Steve's here with the newsletter. We have a wonderful newsletter with uh, some stupid jokes in it and things like that. Uh, but uh, it, it's got a lot of new, news items in there that you'll want to read. And Bill Lewis, is Bill here today? No, he's in China. He's in China. He's doing the China study? <laughs> <laughs> okay. He does the meeting summary. Bill Bailey is out around the corner, but he'll be coming back. And uh, he's our librarian. And by the way, uh, librarian books, boy, you want a bestseller? This is the, this is the Bible. $25, but well worth it. It covers everything you need to know about it. And it's from our friends up in uh, Marina Del Rey. It's brand new, and uh, it's very informative. George, what, what's the title? <clears throat> it's uh, The Key to Prostate Cancer. The key to prostate cancer. Twenty-five dollars. We don't get any money out of this. Uh, it goes directly to the authors. And uh, okay, uh, Chuck Grimm is here. Chuck makes sure uh, this this thing works. I don't know how it works, but he knows. And, uh, and then we got uh, Jim. He's our happy guy. He's our happy guy to greet you and so forth. And got any questions? Talk to him. So if you want to join us, we we have. Uh, Wonderful benefit program. Lousy salaries, but wonderful benefits. So come join us. Okay, the newcomer package. Uh, uh, you get the newcomer package with some background information on prostate cancer. Uh, it's got a cover page. We want you to turn that in. Everybody got one? Okay. And uh, so there's articles and stuff in there. And uh, you get a call from Gene to welcome you. Uh, <clears throat> what do we do here? Well, we're here, we're a patient focus. We're not allied with any particular hospital or doctors or, or organization. We're independent. We're here to serve you as patients. This is a patient group. 
And uh, we have doctors come in and we have our own members give talks. And uh, if you want to give a talk, uh, let me know. Uh, but we're not a substitute for your doctor. And what we hope we do is we get, give you the opportunity uh, to ask your doctor questions, which you hear here. Ask your doctor about, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So uh, ask your doctor about what you're going to hear today. We're not recommending necessarily what these gentlemen have developed and, and offer, but uh, ask your doctor about it. And because this is so brand new, he may not know much about it. And, uh, but uh, you're going to have business cards out there in case everybody wants to know more information. And you've got a website, yep. uh, Men's Health, no apostrophe F, uh, S, well, it's just Men's Health. Uh, check it out. What do we do for you? We got a website with uh, just talked about. We have a whole bunch of CDs that will be uh, informative to you. You, it's, uh, they're from past meetings and other conferences and things like that. They're only ten bucks. We and we make a couple of bucks on those, so buy them. And uh, we've got a newsletter and we've got an outreach program. Uh, if you belong to any group uh, that you want uh, us to talk to about prostate cancer, we've got a snappy 20-minute presentation that we give to rotaries and things like that. Uh, now, you're also part of our outreach, outreach program. Your buddies out there are the same age. They should be getting their PSA and so forth. And you have sons. The likelihood of your sons getting uh, uh, prostate cancer are higher because you got it. So you ought to be talking to your sons that are 50 and tell them to get a PSA. And we have monthly meetings. Okay, now we're gonna do a quick survey of the groups. This is for our speakers and also for the newcomers. How many are here for the first time? Raise your hand, please. Good, welcome. I hope you uh, find uh, information here of value and you'll wanna come back. And. Uh, how many have uh, been recently diagnosed in the last six months? And, uh, okay, fine. Uh, hope we, you get, some, get informed here. How many have prostate cancer for one year? Up to one year. All right. How many up to four years? Okay. And five to ten. See, so now we're reaching uh, the curve here. What happens after five? <laughs> Eleven to fifteen. Okay, now we're going on the down slope. And uh, higher than 15 years. It's up to you and me today, I guess. Well, how, how, how many years you got? I got 17. Okay, I got 21. 18, 18 good for you. Uh, I remember one of our doctors, he's also one of our speakers, asked me one day, what are you doing? And I thought, what am I doing wrong? And I was kind of defensive about it. He said, no, what are you doing right? My gosh, you've got uh, 20 years and uh, so forth. So I'm doing what I learned here, I use. That's what, that's what has credited me with a long life. I'm 86 years old and uh, I, I keep active and I'm in good shape. All right. Now, Jack is our, is our, our uh, the king of the uh, road here. Jack's not here today, but he has uh, 27 years. He's got a big smile. Okay, what have you had in treatment? Now, guys like Gene are going to be raising their hand often. Okay, uh, so if you had any of these, uh, raise a hand. Okay, how many haven't had any treatment but are active surveillance? All right, that's good. See, that's what, you, you didn't jump into surgery right off the bat. Uh, urologists now are, are encouraging wait and see because you've got time depending on uh, your metrics. How many have had prostate surgery of all kinds? Okay. And that used to be the gold standard. And now how many have had radiation? See, see I've had radiation. So that's, that's the gold standard now. How many are on ADT hormone therapy? And uh, I bet you got ED too. Uh, chemotherapy, how many are on chemotherapy? Way in the back. And here, anybody else? All right. New treatments, Zyphigo, uh, uh, 
Provenge, uh, Cryo, Haifu, how are you doing? Okay, let, let's do a little survey. What have you got? What have I got? For treatment. Oh, shit, kind of prostate cancer. Yeah, no, what kind of treatment? What kind of treatment? I've had uh, Zofigo, uh, Provenge, Lutetium, Zofigo, Keytruda, and a couple others. All right. All right, sir, you have had those plus. Yes, I've had all those uh, uh, no chemotherapy as yet. So uh, any, any approved treatment I've had. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is if you're thinking of or taking it or something, see these guys and ask them about the side effects and things like that. What have you had, sir? Uh, Lutetian in Australia, three cycles. Wow. How long is the trip? Uh, 15 hours each way, but it's $20,000 so far. <coughs> but my runaway PSA is uh, not... Good, that's a good nurse. Anybody else want to share what treatment? What do you got? Uh, I had cryotherapy like seven or eight years ago. Yes, they worked for you? Yes. Okay, was it easy? Relatively. Yeah. Do uh, fun? What? Was that Dr. Dupont? It was. Yeah. Good guy. Yes? Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're uh, mentioning uh, uh, therapies and things that I, like cryotherapy, what is that? Uh, uh, could you explain some of the... Okay, get the book. Get the book. I I'll read it to you for $50, but you can read it yourself for 25 <laughs> Uh, well, no, you can look up on the website or uh, and, and find cryo treatment and so forth. Cryo is, is the freezing, hypo is the uh, heating, and, and there are various ways of doing it, thermal treatments. Um, all right, how many have had it reoccur? Yeah, see, that's, that's down the road a piece for you people. That's why you need to get a PSA often. And by the way, after you've had treatment, your PSA key milestone goes in the decimals. It's not the three or four, it goes in the decimals. So that's why you need to track it. How many are undecided of what to do? Okay, we ought to get together then. <laughs> uh, see, there's so many new things that are coming up to, to, to watch for. Uh, so we're, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about ED. So let me ask you, how many have a concern or currently have ED? I do, yeah. Well, that's why you're here. Let me ask you a summer, uh, uh, other question. How many, how many have had a TERP? Were they rotor rooter up to your bladder neck? Okay, how many have had that? I've had it twice. How many have... Uh, Constant flow of urine, have to wear a, a, a absorbent material. How many have that? Yeah, I do. See, that's, that's what happens if you have many terps. So, uh, so uh, how many have metastasized? Okay, uh, let me give you the uh, six keys to dealing with prostate cancer. These are the things, if you're going to manage your prostate cancer, your case, one, you need early detection. Uh, how would you like to have too late detection? That's the problem with prostate cancer. The obvious symptoms don't occur until it's almost too late. So that's why a PSA test is important. Yeah. Then you need a high definition diagnostic. Uh, then that helps you decide uh, what treatment and so forth, but also real key is to target your uh, biopsy. Aim at the tumor. Uh, we don't recommend the random 12. Uh, we want you to do the targeted so they really get to the lesion or, or uh, uh, area of, of biggest concern. Know your Gleason score. Because once you know that, now you're on the path of deciding on what kind of treatment, whether active surveillance or more invasive treatment. And uh, 
if you've got a six, at least in six, that's why you should be on active surveillance. And uh, one of the things about the treatment that's uh, not well discussed, but it's in here, are the side effects. I get every side effect, sometimes simultaneously. And in here, it talks about how to deal with those side effects. And we're going to be hearing about the side effects of some of these uh, treatments that result in ED. All right. Mike, come on up here and introduce our speakers. Good morning. I'm Michael Brecka. Uh, I've spoken here a couple times. Um, and in just my case, I had cancer initially, prostate cancer, about 10 years ago at the age of 50. And so uh, my concern was the side effects. And so I came to this meeting and learned a lot about my options. You know, I was considering surgery and other options. Uh, I had gone up to Dr. Bond up in Ventura, and his color Doppler ultrasound indicated that my cancer was heading towards my urethra, and if I were to get surgery, I would be incontinent. You know, just end of story. And so he recommended I do radiation. So I had done IMRT at UCSD, and this was before Proton was available in San Diego. And the interesting thing, over the last 10 years, technology and medicine has changed so much, the treatments we have now weren't even around when I had my first set of, of treatments. And so now things are changing and daily, if, and next year it's going to be different than this year. So that's the fascinating thing about the medical field. My concern was the side effects of incontinence and impotence. I had a recurrence of prostate cancer that came back oh, about a, two years ago, and I hit it hard and went through the analysis and did the, um, the appropriate scanning, MPMRIs, and all the different scans that are available and looked at my options. Um, the, even surgery was presented as an option, but I would have become completely incontinent and impotent if I had done that. Uh, I chose to do what's called HDR, high-dose radiation, up at UCLA, which is a kind of like a brachy therapy, but instead of leaving seeds inside of you, they put needles inside of you, and they're radiated needles, and they stick them in temporarily and then pull them out. Uh, but it, basically the same treatment of radiation. And of the different types of treatment, this gentleman asked about cryotherapy and, you know, there's radiation, different types of radiation, you know, the proton, IMRT, um, the high-dose radiation. There's HIFU, which is high-frequency ultrasound. Uh, there, there's many, many different types of treatment. And my concern was what the side effect was going to be. So after my treatment, which was like setting off a nuclear bomb in my prostate, it got rid of the prostate cancer but the side effects are, I'm slightly incontinent, but not bad. I mean, I can, if I see a bathroom, I don't pass it up. Uh, and if I got to go, I excuse myself and I make sure I go. So I'm kind of preemptive. But um, ED has become a big issue. And so it's basically my nerves got fried through the treatment. And so I was ex I've been exploring different options that are out there. I mean, I'm you know, married and you know, still sexually active, but that's an issue for me. And so I had heard about the ARC men's clinic and went to go see them to find out, you know, okay, can this help me? And you know, the, the, the jury's still out on that, uh, whether it will help me or not because I have nerve damage versus other issues that affect ED. And I thought, you know what, maybe it's not appropriate for me, but maybe it's appropriate for other guys that are running into the, these situations. So let me bring these guys in and see if there's some benefit for others that, that uh, might be interested in these treatments. So we have here uh, three gentlemen from the clinic, uh, and I'm going to have them come up there. So there's there's Matt, Matt. Charles, and I haven't Dr. met Keeler. Dr. Keeler, and uh, they run the clinic down in Mission Valley, and uh, and they can summarize what the treatment is and to whom it is applicable. <laughs> gentlemen. I'm just going to get you light your intro. How are you doing this morning? Good. My name is Matt Coker. Um, I am the general manager at ARC Men's Health. Um, we are, are an ED clinic in Mission Valley, so uh, right where the 8 and the 163 come together. Down there, we've been about a year and a half uh, down there. And, um, you know, we only do one, one thing, it's just ED. That's all we focus on, erectile dysfunction. We know, uh, you know, the numbers of men 
over 50 that have erectile dysfunction is astronomical um, and probably a little biased because I work in the business, but in my opinion, every guy over 50 <laughs> has ED on some level, <laughs> you know, whether it's just starting and they don't even realize what's going on um, or they don't want to admit it and acknowledge it, um, you know, it's pretty rare. I think a guy over 50 or 55 can say that, it, that everything's working the same way at this age that it did at 20 or 25, right? And, uh, you know, as we age, it's kind of the natural progression. Things don't get better as we get older. They get worse. Um, so what we do is, is acoustic wave therapy. A lot of people uh, here in the U.S. haven't even heard about it before they hear us on the radio or read us in the paper. Um, just out of curiosity, how many of you in this, in this place today have heard of acoustic wave therapy? One, two, three, okay. Three or four of you, okay. Um, so a lot of people, you know, we've got to educate them on what it is and why it's effective in treating men with ED. Um, you know, there, there's a whole lot of people that come in and, and like I said, they have no clue. And so we've really got to make sure they understand it. Our website has a lot of really good information on it. Um, when we get done here today, I'll be out in the, in the, the foyer out here passing out cards, business cards. It has our website on it. Uh, there's a lot of good information on there, case studies and, and just, you can kind of read up about why it works and why it's effective. And, and we're going to go over that here in just a couple minutes. Um, but if you want to jot it down, if you have a pen and a piece of paper, it's just arcmenshealth.com, and arc is spelled A-R-C, so A-R-C menshealth.com, and you can read up about acoustic wave therapy and, and see why it's effective and why it might be able to help you uh, with the ED. You know, we have a lot of guys come in that's had their prostates removed, and, and uh, we talk to them, and, you know, we have our, uh, our doctor here today, Dr. Keeler, our, our urologist is with us here, so um, he's going to field some questions when we're done. Um, but we've been, been here for about a year and a half in San Diego, um, we've treated probably around 400 men uh, in a year and a half with about an 80% success rate. Um, so, you know, we get the guys coming in that, you know, they've been on Viagra, you know, tried Viagra. And, and for the most part, people tell me the same thing. I've sat down with probably five, 600 men in the last year and a half. And it's pretty much the same story every time. They tell me, you know, right when I hit about 50 years old, um, I started noticing it's not that it, it didn't work, but is, you know, greatly decreased in its functionality. And it's definitely been on the de decline. And they say, you know, from 50 to 55, I was taking Viagra. It worked great the first couple of years I took it. Uh, I thought maybe I'll just do this the rest of my life. I'll deal with the headaches. You know, most guys taking Viagra, there's a lot of side effects, headaches, blurred vision. Uh, they feel flush, you know, down the line. There's a bunch of, of side effects. But anyways, but they tell me, you know, four or five years into it, uh, it became, you know, 50-50 whether or not it worked. Um, and through the years, it's become less and less effective to where, you know, it's really not working anymore. And the reason why is because they're getting less and less blood flow going down to the growing. So if you can't get enough blood going down there, you can't function. So uh, a lot of times they're looking for a new way to treat this. They hate Viagra anyways. You know, you can do the shots, the injections, uh, but nobody really wants to stick themselves with a needle to get an erection. So we're, we're a good option for these guys. I love it when they come in and they've got the issue and they're, and they're sitting there kind of pouring their heart out to me. And when I see them a few weeks down, down the road, um, it's a series of treatments. But when I see them and they come in, they high five me and, and they say, hey, this has worked great. I love it, man. I'm, I'm getting my, my life back. Uh, it feels good doing something like that, being in a business where I'm helping people get their sex life back. Um, if you made a, a, a list to a bunch of men and said, what's the most important things in your life uh, between family and money and all that, sex would be pretty high up on that list, right, for most men. So um, it's an important thing in our lives and it, nobody wants to lose their sex life. So uh, we've helped a lot of guys and, uh, you know, uh, we could potentially help you in this room as well. So I'm going to bring up Charlie. Charlie is uh, one of our managers at the clinic. Uh, he's going to come do a slideshow show presentation and kind of give you a little more information on it. Uh, and then after that, Dr. Keeler is going to come up and, and speak for a couple minutes and field some questions. So Charlie, why don't you come on up? So it's also known if you're doing some research on it, it's uh, the shockwave therapy or acoustic wave therapy. Um, a lot of times people think testosterone, we'll, we'll do testosterone injections, uh, like depot injections, you know, the fat layer for, the, for erection, but it really doesn't um, help with erectile function that much. Uh, there, there are uh, testosterone receptors all over your body, they're more in your heart than there are in your, in your crotch. Um, it's basically a blood flow issue. So, and what happens is the blood flows, when we get an erection, the blood flows in through the arteries, and then out through the veins. And what happens is the arteries expand and they push against the veins and they pinch them shut. And so they trap the blood in there and prevent it from leaking out and that's what the erection is. 
So here's a, a normal artery. This, this inner layer, this very thin, it's one, one cell thick, it's the endothelium. You probably heard endothelial dysfunction. What it does is it signals, using a chemical nitric oxide, it signals this smooth muscle layer to expand and get bigger, and that's what happens in the erection. And you can see we have a lot of arteries, uh, veins, blood going through here. So these are all the just the arteries bringing it in. And um, what happens is it's mediated with uh, nitric oxide, and there's a nitric oxide synthase uh, that the body uses to convert uh, arginine into nitric oxide. Anyway, nitric oxide signals the exterior, the layers to expand. Okay, but nitric oxide also heals the endothelium, so it's, it's a good chemical. Okay, so this is, I like this pointer. Okay, so these are the, the veins, the open veins in a non-erect penis, okay? And then you get the nitric oxide, and so here are the veins, you know, that are closed, so they're pressed by the arteries, they, they close them down, okay? But the problem is that over time, in pretty much all of us, plaque builds up inside the arteries. So here's a progression, just an average prog progression over, you know, over a lifetime. And so it builds up between the endothelium and the, uh, the media, the layer inside here. General, and so it closes off the opening. So that's, that's uh, one effect. We get less blood in there overall. But the, it's also preventing, it's stiffening the artery. It's atherosclerosis, just like, just like heart disease. It's preventing the artery from expanding. It's removing the elasticity, hardening of the arteries. You hear that? So the artery can't expand. So we get the constant leakage. Where's that? Out of veins during the filling process. So yeah, and generally, just generally, you get a lack of firmness at first, and then a, and then it goes away too soon, and finally, the blood's leaking out as fast as it can, can come in. So there's no erection. So this is the therapy. This is a really highly simplified you're drawing, but basically you're you're using sound, focused sound pulses to uh, soften up the art, soften up the um, the plaque in the artery, and it, 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 it also uh, it builds new blood vessels. And so the, it works on the arterial walls as well. It, it heals them, so you're, re, you're able to regain that function. And it's been used for years. Shockwave therapy is uh, used to treat kidney stones. So it's lithotripsy is what they call it. So it breaks up kidney stones for the removal. So recently, the FDA cleared it for this use and other tissues. It's also good for... Things like plantar fasciitis, uh, joint pains, it's very, it's, it's very interesting. So it also stimulates the growth of new blood vessels. So um, you get not only the clearing, the clearing up of the existing plaque, but the new microcapillaries. So anyway, when someone comes into the clinic, the, uh, the doctor does an examination and the blood flow is, uh, is measured with a Doppler ultrasound machine. And so we use the three, the three main arteries, the two pedendal arteries and the dorsal artery, uh, to see how much blood flow is going through there. And uh, so the, it gives a, you know, a reading from 0%, which would be fully blocked, to 100%, which would be you know, what we were at 19. <laughs> and so what we see a lot in here are people who are, uh, ha are getting 60% of the blood that they, they could be getting. So essentially 40% blockage. And... Um, that which is a, a circulatory issue. So in what, we're, what we're looking at is once, if we can get somebody to 75 to 80 percent, then uh, function, that, that, that seems to be the sweet spot where everybody's you know, happy. Yes, sir? Is that good in the limp condition or is that Yes, I, everything's limp. There's never been an erection in the, in the clinic. It's all, it's all the, um, the, so we're measuring, you use the Doppler ultrasound and you press it against like the, so the crease here between the leg and the crotch. And then against the body, you know, above the above the shaft. So it's all everything's out. So um, and just generally, just generally, if someone comes in at 60 percent, which is very common, uh, six treatments get 75 to 80. That's good. We measure before and after. And it really 100 percent of the cases, the uh, blood flow increases. But um, this, if somebody's coming in instead at um, 60, at, instead of 60 percent, if they're coming in at say 40 percent, you know, then it's going to take more treatments. So that's what we just like to get it all. We see what what the impairment is. Um, so which is, but this is, it's a different issue 
from um, the prostate treatment. That's that's it's a, it's a little it's not as you know, it's simple. It's it's much more simple for someone who hasn't had prostate uh, cancer treatments because there's a possibility the, of nerve damage. We don't really know and we can't really quantify it, but we can quantify the blood flow. So uh, we can see if there's a circulatory issue, um, you know, and we can see that that's that, that this will help that. But it's hard to tell about the uh, about the uh, nerve damage. So we uh, just as I as a real thumb, I ask people if they tried any of the medications and how they work. And generally, if you've gotten any any result at all, a tiny result from the medication, uh, then that means you don't have nerve damage or you don't have much nerve damage. Um, but the medications, like Matt said, don't work for everybody. So uh, just because somebody doesn't didn't respond to the medications, it could have been because their circulation was already so impaired to begin with. So it doesn't mean that they do have nerve damage if they don't, but it's just a, a good, quick and dirty, you know, first thing. So, so what, we, what we have is um, we have the one process, which is possible nerve damage from the, from the cancer treatments. Then we've got the circulatory you know, nerve damage. So it's not as, as easy. And uh, so some of this, the studies that have been done, uh, you know, there, you can't really, you, you get a group of people and put them in, and so everybody's different on it. Like here is one, um, you're in clinical, uh, I like these guys. So anyway, there 21 patients came in. They used uh, shockwave therapy. The, you'll see this. This is acoustic wave therapy. It's also known as shockwave therapy, low-intensity extracorporeal, which is outside the body, shockwave therapy. A lot of times you see it as LIST or SWT. So they, they uh, treated 10 patients, and they, they kept 10 as a placebo group. So uh, even though they had a, which is a small number of patients, short and a short-term follow-up uh, indicate that it's effective, safe, and well-tolerated. It uh, could be an alternative for early penile rehabilitation patients who have undergone the, uh, the radical prostatectomy. And here was another one, um, 2017 at the International Urolog, uh, about urology. Uh, so they did it at one month, six month, nine month follow-ups. Um, they had a significant increased score, and this is in the IIEF, the International Index of Erectile Function, uh, from, and they, they measured them at the different follow-ups. And so early on, it was uh, remaining seven, da, 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 da. so they, oh, was, I actually highlighted, this was at 3 a.m. this morning, I apologize. Anyway, this is, this is really unclear, but they, they, they did, <laughs> it's unclear to me, this close. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they measured the patients, and they got a good increase, and their increase was good. Even uh, early on, it was great, but over nine months, it was still good. That, that's been the concern that it, it didn't last that long. And, and again, I didn't know if I could pull up the actual. I can, I can supply any of these you know, websites to you. They're, they're online. Um, but this is another one that's uh, following it later, one year after radical prostatectomy. So they... 31 patients were included, mean age 63. Uh, the standard low intensity shockwave therapy protocol seems clinically ineffective for post art immediately, but applying more shockwave uh, energy has a stronger positive effect in order to reach clinical to determine if additional clinical trials are tried. So what they did is they, they gave the standards is like six treatments um, and they did that and they said, okay, not much of a result. But they, so they did more. I think they did 20 treatments there, and they said, "Yeah, then that helped." So what they're saying is, if if this amount doesn't work, you know, uh, you might consider more treatments. Um, so that's the that's the issue here. It's hard to it's hard to to say yes, it is. It's really come in, get your blood flow measured, talk to the doctor, and um, you know, see if it see if it would be if it would be right again because there's a confounding possibility of nerve damage. So that's basically it for me. Any questions? Yeah. Yes, sir. And what's the, uh, how much does it cost? What that means? That's him. <laughs> yes, That'd be, that would be Matt. So it would be, depend on the number of treatments. And everything. The cost of the, the initial uh, physician's exam is $99. And, and does any of the insurance? No, unless you have a health savings account. 
uh, you know, but which is you know, money pre-tax it pays for. It's a qualified medical expense, but really uh, none of the regular insurance does, and I, I think it's a money-saving thing because at some point, we've got guys in their 30s, guys in their 90s. At some point, every, I, I'm 68. I, I use it. I like it a lot. But at some point, everybody needs it. Got a stronger voice than I do, so you don't need this. All right, so just just a, a brief overview. So acoustic wave therapy is essentially we're using sound waves to break up the plaque that's built up in the veins and the, and the arteries uh, down in the growing in the penis area. Um, and as we do that, we increase the circulation, which gets you know guys back on their feet sexually. Um, you know, as, as they've gotten older, they've gotten more and more restricted in their blood flow. We're opening that up, increasing blood flow circulation. One of the cool things uh, with our, our uh, treatment is it's not just for ED. We've been able to treat tendonitis, uh, arthritis. Um, like you said, there, there's a lot of other things we can do with this with pain management. Our average age is about 70 at the clinic, people coming in. So they have a lot of joint issues, pain issues, stuff like that. So um, there's a lot of people we've been able to treat, you know, not just ED. Um, so anyways, long story short, you know, what we're doing is increasing circulation and blood flow so men can get functional again. Um, everybody wants to have their, their sex life and we're kind of doing Viagra's job but more on a permanent basis. So um, what people don't understand a lot of times is when we're talking about erections, everybody knows they need blood flow. But what they think is just at the at the point of intimacy, let's just get a bunch of blood down there, get the erection, and then you're good, right? And that's what Viagra's doing. Our take on it is more an overall health. What we're trying to do is create passive blood flow going down there all day, you know, while you're eating, sleeping, exercising, whatever you're doing. So there's health down in that region of your body as opposed to just pushing blood down there, getting an erection, the blood flow leaves, and then you're back the way you were, right? We're just opening you up so you have constant blood flow. So the guys that have had their prostate removed, yeah, it's a lot harder for us to correct that, okay? You're probably in the, the percentage of guys that, you know, it's not as effective. However, if you had the surgery and it was nerve sparing and you've had erections since the surgery, um, there's a lot more chance we could help you out with that, okay? But we make no claims, no guarantees. We cannot guarantee a medical procedure. Guys come in and say, well, I'll, I'll do it if you guarantee it. I say, well, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and guarantee this works because if I did that, I'd be a liar. And so I tell, here's the chances, the percentages, you know, but, but it's, it's uh, you know, it is highly effective. So um, a gentleman over here asked the price of our procedure. Um, the price of our procedure for six treatments is $2,900, okay? Anybody that calls us from this group and books an appointment and wants to come in, your price is just $1,900, okay? So we're taking $1,000 off if you tell us you're from this group or we're going to have a sign-up sheet today. If you want to make an appointment and you sign up, $1,900 is, is your, your price, Okay. Um, any other questions or, or yeah? Um, what is the connection, if any, between other circulatory problems like peripheral neuropathy or Raynaud's syndrome? It seems to me they're all circulatory issues, but I don't know about that. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. I'm not a doctor despite my looks. I probably look like a doctor, young and smart. <laughs> <laughs> Good looking and all that, um, <laughs> but I'm not a doctor. Uh, <laughs> uh, people ask me all the time, oh, you're a doctor? Nope, I'm not a doctor, I'm not. But I did bring one of our urologists here, Dr. Keeler. He's gonna address questions like that. I feel it's better coming from a medical professional than from me. So Dr. Keeler, why don't you come on up? Um, unless there's any other questions other than, than something, you know, yeah. Uh, what about Medicare? You didn't specifically yeah, it, no, we don't take any insurance there. We're, we're out of network provider. They, they don't cover this procedure. Um, it's kind of like if you went to your optometrist and said, you know, yeah. Which way does it Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were like trying to stop me. Like, um, <clears throat> you know, if you went to your optometrist and said, hey, uh, you know, I got a vision problem. He gives you glasses covered by your insurance. But if you're going to get the LASIK done, you got to come out of pocket. We're kind of the same way right now. So it's all, it's all cash. Is there any relationship if you, if you know you're going for surgery and you do have some erectile dysfunction to get the treatment? Pre-surgery, uh, would that uh, help post-surgery? Possibly if the nerve function is still there. If, if you're going in to get your prostate removed? Well, we're not gonna treat anybody that has active cancer in their body because we don't wanna spread it, you know? And so that's one of the things we wanna make, look at your PSA levels and make sure, you know, you're not, 
you know, basically handle that first and make sure you're, you're clean bill of health from your doctor, and then we'll treat you because our concern is we don't want to spread any cancer cells in your body. Um, so I've had several guys come in that, you know, say, yeah, well, I have cancer and, you know, I'm going to get uh, surgery in a, six months. I said, I, we won't treat you until you have a clean bill of health from your, from your doctor. Um, and let me just be clear on, on the, uh, the treatments we do. It's not just come in one time, do a treatment and go home. It's a series of treatments. Um, when I say $1,900 for you guys, that's for a set of six treatments. Okay, so we'll do that, you know, hopefully in, in about a month, we'll get you six treatments. Um, and then what we look for is improvement during those six treatments. Most guys need more than six. It's just the way it is. We've got a lot of work to do on a lot of these guys. Um, there's mild ED, right? And then there's severe ED. The guy who's had it for 20 years or 15 years is going to need more treatments than a guy that's, you know, 48 years old and started, started noticing some decrease in function six months ago. You know, so everybody, it really just depends. Um, and we can, you know, if you guys are interested in doing it, we can sit down and talk about it. But the 1900 I quoted, that's for six treatments, okay? Um, so, you know, if you're interested, like I said, we can talk afterwards and, and get more detail about that. But I'll turn this over to Dr. Keeler. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. I got an impression, help me out here, that this doesn't work too well. Okay. Uh, you want to deal with that? Because I couldn't track the printing and the fine print and all that. What's the probability of success? I mean, you want Dr. Dan here. Well, he, he can kind of follow up, but when you're saying I have an, I got an impression that this treatment doesn't work too well, you got to understand we see a lot of different people with a lot of different issues. So the guy who's at, this is a prostate cancer. Yeah, so yeah. Focus on prostate right, and that, and that's what I'm talking about. So the the guys who come in just say, hey, I'm having an issue. Great, no no prostate issues, nothing like that. Very high success rate. The guys who have had prostate surgery, they've, you know, there's been some nerve issues, stuff like that. They're in the lower percentage of guys we help, but we are able to help guys that have had the surgery and they say, look, Viagra does nothing for me. The injections do nothing. We've done the treatment. They've seen results, but really what we're looking at, you know, there's several things we look at, but one of them I'm really keen on is, you know, have you been able to get any erection down there since your surgery? Well, five years ago, you had the surgery. You haven't had an erection since then. That's a lot harder for us. Some guys will say, look, I've had random erections since then, we know that there's blood getting down there. We know there's hope to help you out. Um, but like I said, you know, the guys that have had prostate issues. It is, it is, you know, a harder case for us to crack because of that. You know, it's, it's not as, uh, as sure as the guys that just come in and say, you know, I have, I've having a problem the last couple of years, but, um, here's the thing. Most guys coming in that have prostate issues say, I've done everything and I, I have, I have no other options you know, and so they're saying, look, I'm willing to give this a shot, you know, and if, if, if they're a 15% chance it'll work, they understand that coming into it, we make sure we're clear about that, and, and if they get results, great, they're, you know, they're happy as can be, because nothing else at that point, you know, has been helping them, so. Um, let me ask you a question. So, the people, though, that uh, have had success with Viagra, then your system will put out them, right? Yeah, if, if someone comes in and says, I'm taking Viagra and it's working, um, I'm just tired of the side effects. You know, we, we know anybody that's had any erections after having the surgery, we know there's a very good chance we can help them because he can get blood flow down there. He can get an erection. There's functionality down there. We're going to help improve that and take it from A to B. Um, however, you know, the guy who said, you know, I've had a surgery 15 years ago. I've tried everything. It's nothing down there. I can't get anything. It's been dead. I say, look, we, we can, we can do the treatment. You know, it's, it's not, we're not going to, you know, throw you out the door. Um, but you are in that very low percentage of guys that, you know, but then again, their, their response is always, well, what else can I do? You know, what other options do I have? And so what we'll do is set them up on six treatments and say, let's just track your progress and see how it goes. If you see any improvement, if you have any life down there, we can look at a longer treatment option for you. Uh, we do up to 18 over the course of a year. Um, and most guys go with 18 treatments over the course of a year um, because several reasons. But once they start seeing results, they know, hey, this is actually going to help me. They want to keep doing it. So um, it, it really is, you know, it's case by case, though. So. Did you mention that... If you have cancer, that you don't want to spread the cancer. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you have, yeah, if you actively have cancer down there, we're not going to treat you because uh, we want a clean bill of health from your doctor. We don't want to spread it. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to make anything worse. Yeah. How often does erectile dysfunction reoccur? Then the issue reoccur if you go through a year of courses and you feel 
pretty satisfied with the results. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, everybody's a little bit different, you know, with that. But you know, the, the, stand, the standard answer to that is is most guys get about a five year lifespan out of doing this once they're really really functioning well. Um, but everybody's different. Everybody, you know, different ages, lifestyle habits, diet, exercise, smoking, drinking, stress, all those things play into factors that would decrease the, the term that it's going to work for them. Uh, we do have a lot of guys that, that do the full round of treatment and uh, they're seeing great results. They're super happy. Sometimes I get calls from the wives, you know, saying, hey, I want to thank you. You know, you're my best friend now or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but but for the guys that have done our full range of treatments, 18 treatments, uh, you know, some guys tell me, look, I know physiologically there's been a change in my body. I'm getting erections. It's great. I feel it. I know it. But they also say the placebo effect. They say, you know, a little bit, it's been a confidence booster. Just like when a man, you know, um, first time he loses an erection in bed or, or can't perform, it's, his confidence crashes, right? And it plays mentally on you. Well, the, the, the same is true on the opposite side of the fence here. When guys start getting their sex life back and things are working well, they, you know, they see more size, they have more sensation down there. Um, I think mentally it's a boost for them too. And they tell me that. They say, I've got my confidence back. So I know physically something's happened, but mentally there's been a great boost as well. And they say that placebo effect is really what I like. So what we do is the guys that have done 18 treatments, if they want to come back and continue doing treatments, you know, once a month, twice a month, it's up to them. It's just 150 bucks a treatment once they've done the full course. Okay. Yeah. If you have metastatic prostate cancer, does that preclude you from the treatment? If you have what? Metastatic prostate cancer? Um, we'd probably we'd probably hold off until you're, you know, getting a, a clean bill of health completely. Um, I'm I'm gonna let Dr. Keeler take that one. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let Dr. Keeler take that one. I manage the place, but once again, I'm not a doctor. So, uh, any anybody else? We'll save him for Dr. Keeler. Dr. Keeler, why don't you come take the podium? So the first question we had over here about peripheral neuropathy and Raynaud's phenomenon, right. neither of those are real vascular problems, those are nerve problems. So peripheral neuropathy is a disease of the nerves, Raynaud's is a disease of the nervous system, so you get spastic blood vessels, but it, it's not like this. This is the lining of the blood vessels called the endothelium. If we took all the endothelium in your body out and weighed it, it would weigh about 20 pounds. But the highest concentration in the body is in the penis. It's a very, very unique organ. And when that endothelium isn't working right, as Charlie talked about, the blood doesn't get in very well, and the valves that are supposed to trap the blood in there and create that high, high pressure inside the penis, it doesn't work very well either. So it's endothelial dysfunction. Yes. Yes. Um, I had prostate surgery last November, and uh, my PSA is now 0 0.2. So there is cancer there. At the moment it stayed there, but it's likely I may need radiation in the future. But I'm assuming from what's been said that I am then not a candidate because I do have cancer in my body. Is that correct? Almost surely you do. It yeah. might not be malignant right. prostate. It could be a piece of benign prostate left behind. You won't know until time has elapsed. But this wouldn't be something that we recommend. Okay. Yes. Um, a little bit off the topic. Uh, since the, uh, since the, uh, this uh, process helps with the uh, veins and the capillaries, I don't know which one, but. Has it been used for people that have art you know, the uh, you know art problems where they have the same kind of problems like that? Has, has this process been using with, used with people that have uh, heart Absolutely. problems? Absolutely. In uh, people who have poor blood flow to the heart, but the anatomy doesn't lend itself to being treatable with a coronary artery bypass or uh, some other modality like that. You can treat the heart, and we know that that generates new blood vessels. It's called neoangiogenesis. And that's theoretically one of the ways this process worked, as Charlie talked about. So it's used frequently in the heart for exactly that reason. Okay, thanks. Yes? Uh, does your treatment work for somebody who has what they call venous leak? 
<laughs> well, that's, that's part of this process. As Charlie talked about, if the blood vessels don't stretch, that's what the stretching of the arteries is what compresses the veins. And so blood gets in, but if the veins don't get compressed, out it goes through the veins. So yeah, that, that, that would be usually very helpful. We went through a phase several years ago when we thought we could document the site of venous leaks, and we actually did surgery to tie off those leaky veins, which was a catastrophe. We don't do that anymore. It's a much more generalized thing, but that would be a perfect reason to have this treatment, yes. 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 So that's the, the classic thing is you get a nice rigid erection, but you don't maintain it because out it goes. Yeah. yeah. So that's what this is designed. One of the things this is designed to treat. Yes. Crohn's disease. You didn't mention that. I'm sorry? Crohn's disease. Well, actually, Peroni's disease has been looked at in particular using this modality. And, uh, Can you describe what it is for us? Yeah, so, so Peyronie's disease is scarring in the corpora cavernosa. The tunica albuginea, the covering of the corpora, develops scar tissue. And so the classic thing is a curved penis because one part of that uh, covering gets scarred, and when the penis expands, the scar doesn't stretch, so the penis bends towards the scar tissue. So we've dealt with that by going in and cutting out the scar tissue and replacing it with either a piece of Gore-Tex or a piece of skin. And uh, there is an enzyme available now that can be injected into this scar tissue to soften it. Unfortunately, each injection costs $5,000, and it usually takes four or five injections to get rid of it. Uh, it, my, one of my shticks about this treatment is that when I examine a patient, I feel very carefully of the penis and feel for scar tissue. I always ask about penile curvature to see if they do have Peyronie's disease, but I find frequently scarring at the base of the penis up near the suspensory ligament, and I think that's one of the things that contributes significantly to, to venous leaks and, and it's a type of Peyronie's because it is a type of scarring. Those men who have Peyronie's who have had this treatment do have some success. It's not fantastic, but a small percentage get some relief of the curvature. Many stop the process. So if you do a, a double bind study and you treat patients either with a sham, so a machine that looks like a, the the real thing, or treat it with the real thing, almost nobody in the sham treated group stops getting worse. They continue to get worse. Virtually everybody that's treated with this low intensity shock wave stops getting worse and a significant number improve as well. Yes? Do you get any improvement from um, patients that have had both uh, radiation and the surgery? You mean radical prostatectomy and then subsequent radiation? And they're cured now? <coughs> yeah. Well, if the radical prostate prostatectomy was done using nerve sparing technique, then there is not a fantastic success rate, but sure, and that's been looked at fairly uh, carefully by the group in Israel that first described this treatment back in 2010. Because it, it seems as though the, the damage to the blood vessels would be different than what you were showing in terms of like a, a, a plaque buildup. Right. Well, it's not like a plug in the artery. It's, it's uh, the wall of the artery doesn't stretch like it used to. So it, uh, you know, and, and there are other techniques going on we don't even understand. We know that the number of stem cells go increases after this treatment. We know that new blood vessels form, so that's part of it. We know that nitric oxide synthetase that Charlie talked about levels increase after this treatment. So there are a lot of different mechanisms going on. Not well understood, I'm sorry to say. Yes? Your treatment vibrates 
whatever the shock wave <laughs> breaks the plaque off. Where's that go? Well, it doesn't break it off. It just kind of reorganizes it, changes the pathology of it. So it's you don't have a bunch of little no. plaques floating around in your throat. You do not know. So this is so, so this technique we've used to break up kidney stones. Well, you don't want to break anything up in there. But for kidney stones, lithotripsy, we use very high energy acoustic waves. There's also a medium intensity kind of uh, shock wave treatment that orthopedists use for plantar fasciitis and tendonitis and all kinds of things. And this low intensity stuff has been used in diabetics for poor wound healing, for peripheral neuropathy. And so it, it uh, you know, it, it's used for a lot of different things. Hello. Can you describe what the condition is when there is nerve damage and why that is a factor in blood flow or not getting blood flow. What's the connection? Is the connection? Well, I mean, to get an erection when you're aroused it requires your brain connecting to your penis. And that comes through nerves. It doesn't just happen out of a clear blue sky. Okay, so there's nerves that are connecting to vessels that's connecting to... Nerves must be giving some kind of signal. And so they are. Uh -huh. nerves are damaged. Yeah, they're signaling to, to release nitric oxide in the penis. So that's, okay, so that's, that's what it's about. The nerves are signaling oxide. Well, I mean, that's one part of it, but it's a whole cascade of things, but the nerve is the impulse that creates the change in, in the penis itself. Okay, so if there's nerve damage, or some sort of osteotectomy means the nerves are cut, there is no other solution. Well, I mean, injection, injection therapy works particularly well in somebody who has nerve damage to the penis. There's a phenomenon called denervation hypersensitivity. So if you denervate something, you get rid of the nerves, it becomes very sensitive to the normal chemicals that are there. So when we inject something in the penis, if I have a patient who has nerve damage, when I first start injecting the medication, I use use a tiny, tiny little dose because usually just with a very small amount of medicine in the injection, they get a nice rigid erection because of this denervation hypersensitivity. So injections work great when somebody has nerve damage. Okay, but your technique does, doesn't cross that gap. Nope. No, so if you've had, had a nerve sparing radical prostatectomy, there's usually enough nerve function that you can get erections going again with this technique. Yeah. Yes. You mentioned injection therapy. Uh -huh. um, over time, do you have to keep increasing the dose in order to get the same effect as you age? And... What well, again? It depends on the cause of the erectile dysfunction. For Joe Blow, that never had a radical prostatectomy. Well, I mean, after a radical prostatectomy, completely impotent, so use the injection. Well, what, whatever diseases go on this in this endothelium as you age are, are going to continue. So probably it is going to take a little bit more medication over time, yeah. But it has nothing to do with, with cancer or, the, or the whatever. It has to do with just part of the normal aging process. That's why 50% of men over the age of 50 have some form of erectile dysfunction. Not true in 20, 30 year olds. I mean, it's just an aging process that affects the penis. Yes? On that, are there any side effects of the injection? Of the injection, yes. If you inject too much, you can get priapism, an erection that won't go away, which is dangerous. And the medication itself is irritating and it can cause scarring in the penis. So one must change the site of injection. Otherwise, you can develop Peyronie's disease as a type of scarring just from the injection itself. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, what we're discussing is something that uh, many urologists don't talk to you about. Uh, and I was reminded at a conference there's a reason. 
uh, most urologists suffer ED. <laughs> <laughs> I'm free to talk about without the personal aspect uh, ever again. So uh, it's more common than you hear about. And I thank you, gentlemen, for, for surfacing it and bringing it up to us today. Uh, you'll be around here in case you have some more personal questions people yeah. want to ask. I'll be here in case you've got some general questions. But other than that, have a happy Easter. Thank you.